Okay. Maddie Shine from New York Songwriters Circle here, and we are paying a visit today to Dubway Studios in New York City. Uh, Dubway has been very generous in supporting our 2008 songwriting contest, and we wanted to uh, take this opportunity and kind of show everybody the facility. And, you know, I know you, all you guys read on the website that a part of the prize is coming here and actually recording with some amazing people. Uh, so we wanted to take this opportunity and kind of give you a, a glimpse of what it looks like and meet some of the people uh, that you'll be meeting when you're here. Here at Dubway we have, I think I speak for all the engineers when I say that we have like a very, like a, a kind of a different approach sometimes to, to recording and that, you know, we work with the space that we have and it kind of goes to the home recording sort of thing and where Al started in this one crazy little room, you know. And uh, now we have a much bigger place, but we still kind of do it the same way, you know, like most of the bands and stuff that we work with, we set them up in, in one live space and we, you know, do our best to baffle things off and all that, but ultimately it's more about the vibe of the whole band all at one time, as opposed to laying down the bass and drum track and then coming back and overdubbing this and that, you know, we just find that we get really great results with people all in one room, kind of all feeling at the same time, more like a live performance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely more life, and more, you can feel it in the track. Oh, absolutely. You know, and the artist feels it too. They're like, "Wow, you know, this I really like this. <laughs> you know, this is like sort of easy. I just go out and do the song. I got my people, you know, and it, it's really rewarding. Instead of being like, "Gosh, to get the snare sound just right or whatever," because a year later that stuff it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter so much. And also when you do that, you like, you know. A little inconsistencies and stuff when you hear a singer's voice break or, or you know just those little things like to me it really adds a right. lot of character a lot of feel to it and it feels like I'm I'm experiencing a lot experiencing a live song as opposed to listening to something that's been washed and shined and cut and put you know like so I just always prefer to hear something that feels a little more real yeah so with you know Doughboy's involvement in the songwriter circle and uh you know, a little bit of time that we can offer a, a songwriter, it's fun to take what is not a huge amount of time and just come in and render your song live with people and it's yeah. a great environment for doing that. And it's very vindicating for us because it's, uh, a lot of us are songwriters and have been, been through the gamut of yeah. production stuff and uh, to work with something that's live and it's a, about the song, it's not about the production. Uh, it's, it's really fun, and you can feel energy there, and you can, uh, it gets much more human. So, so throughout the years, you guys pretty much had a range of, you know, from the beginning songwriter, new person coming in for the first time, all the way up to superstars and work for TV and film and overdubs. And you guys pretty much do everything, yeah? Yes. We will do. We will do anything just to get it. Yes. But, it's, but that's what makes it really fun yeah. too. And actually, I gotta say, in, in my twenty odd years of doing this, some of the sessions. I mean, I work with some amazing players who are real <clears> pros and just they're just amazing musicians. Uh, and I've also worked with people who had a whole another idea of what the songs and music were about. And they're, you know, some people would think maybe these people are a little muddy, you know, and <laughs> kind of, how can you listen to that? But, you know, some of that stuff was the most uh, affecting, just because it was, they're obviously not trying to sound like so-and-so or so-and-so. They have this own thing in their head, and uh, that stuff is, is really fun to do. Dubway's been around for a long time. Start as a little rat hole in, uh, over on 8th Avenue with, you know, fire engines going by and heavy metal bands upstairs and reggae bands to the side and all kinds of sounds coming to the studio. Tons of music all over the place, but pretty hard to record. But uh, cut my teeth over there for a bunch of years and then we had the opportunity finally to, to move into a quiet space and build it out right. And uh, hence this place. So now there aren't uh, people aren't uh, the ambulance siren that always came in in the background and in the perfect place coincidentally whatever showed up apparently but uh, <laughs> it is no longer an issue we actually have to artificially add you know ambulance sirens and stuff like that. 
Well, as you know, Russ Tigerman is uh, is somebody that I love working with, uh, and through Russ, it's kind of been um, Christine Eversall, the the Broadway singer, who actually I guess won a Tony recently. Yeah, he actually um, told us about about working on her record. That's yeah, fun. great. It was a great record. Yeah, um, it, that was a really strange experience because it started out where she just brought in like a a two track recording of a, a really great live show she did at the Metropolitan Room, and uh, she loved it so much, but it wasn't a great recording. So we just decided to kind of set up a little stage in the live space and uh, just kind of let them go to town. And they just played their set, you know. Wow. Uh, but it's pretty incredible what she can do just totally live. You know, she's really amazing. Um, but she's one of my favorites, Christy and Eversall, definitely. Um, through Russ, also Al Cooper uh, from Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Um, I did a lot of mixing and stuff with him. He's a really kooky character, really great guy. I think it really kind of, because with pop music, as polished as it's become, it gives these artists like a real good opportunity to kind of trim it back, bring it back to roots, and just really show their songwriting skills and their, you know, musicianship, as opposed to all this slick production, you know. Yeah. So I think that's one of the greatest things about these, like, slimmed down sort of live sets. Cool. Yeah, it's very visceral to just have the, uh, the song itself exposed and one lone voice trying to render it right. and that's where a really good song yeah. jumps out if we talk about you know the the the, the beginner songwriter the, the the people that write amazing songs but you know they do it in their bedrooms and then and we maybe record on a home computer um, any tips for those people starting out who maybe you know don't want to go and put up a huge budget on recording their songs on a demo or you know just need a recording to pitch their songs out and not specifically to put out commercially my first suggestion, depending how inexperienced you are, is to talk to people who've done it. If you can find a producer who could just be an engineer you know from some studio who's, who's worked in a studio, uh, and have them uh, work with you way before you get to the studio. Say so, so, you know, this tune, I don't think it needs drums, you know, I think if you had just like a percussionist and a keyboard, you know, that would be great. Or if you're determined to rock it out, you know, help you find players that can do it, do a rehearsal beforehand, do as much stuff beforehand rehearsal. as you can, <laughs> so that when you come to the studio, there's not a bunch of mucking around and... You know, what tempo should we do this at? You know, it's oh, too slow, you know, and then... You can waste so much time doing that stuff. Yeah. So finding somebody who's experienced, even a little bit, and disciplining yourself to just, when you do finally go to the studio and spend that money, it's a very efficient thing. But I think when you're at home, like my biggest thing, someone who, you know, I grew up in this, this whole digital era, um, don't... Don't get so excited about all these. Re I mean, you have a ton of resources, you know, at your disposal, definitely. But don't get overwhelmed by them. Don't don't, overdo don't go it. crazy with it. You know, yeah. just because you have that synth or you have that really cool drum plug-in doesn't mean you need to use it. Again, how would you perform this song live? You know, and how does this live song translate to tape? And that's what, always my starting point is when I originally wrote the song. How did it feel? You know, and just start there. But you know. It's so cheap and easy nowadays to get, you know, some drum plug-in or some keyboard or something that you can really kind of, re like Al was saying, muck up your song. Yeah. And the song is totally lost. And you can do that in the studio where you have these amazing resources and it's really easy to get, like, really excited about. But you can also do it at home, even on your computer. And I see that a lot, definitely. So just, you know, calm down. Less is more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too precious about every moment. Yeah, you know, just yeah. like so let it true. go. Yeah. yeah.